Hi all, I have a very interesting game from the realms of computer chess to show you. Deep Minds, which uh, was the company that Google bought from Demis Asapis, uh, who was actually, by the way, someone I knew from, from school uh, for a while, uh, who was himself a, a great chess enthusiast, uh, but he left chess to sort of more focus on um, uh, programming and game writing and all sorts of things after that. AI was a big interest. So he founded DeepMind, that was bought by Google. And now uh, they defeated the Go, the Go world champion using uh, some sort of AI they developed. And more recently, there's a paper which has just been uh, released, the Alpha Zero algorithm developed by Google and DeepMind apparently took only four hours of playing itself. And it taught itself how to beat the world computer champion Stockfish. And it kind of beat Stockfish 28 to zero in a hundred game match. But I think the time limit might be pretty short, like one minute each for these games. Uh, but nevertheless, it's pretty shocking news for the world of chess AI, as far as I can tell. Because I, I believe that um, there wasn't much scope for improvement outside of the incremental brute force uh, search, you know, better hardware was the primary driver, but uh, I guess the heuristics that chess engine writers have been evolving over the years and the other things they've been uh, doing to try and make their their chess programs better and better, that's been just super su surpassed by this approach of, I think it's called reinforcement learning. It just teaches itself with reinforcement learning. And uh, so a neural network teaching itself, but with a gen more generic uh, search algorithm Anyway, let's have a look at one of the games. Uh, so DeepMind um, playing black against Stockfish. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have bishop b5, knight f6. <laughs> so it does like the Berlin defense. Uh, that's, it hasn't been given anything. No opening book, no end games, no, no nothing. It's just been t taught itself and it's arrived at this conclusion that this is a good opening. So the Super GMs might be right after all. It's kind of validated a lot of the popular openings as well in what it plays. D3, Bishop C5, White took on C6. Now White castles any, and White is attacking that pawn now. That's protected. Knight BD2, Black castles, Queen E1. So F6, some pressure on F6 is released. Was well, it's reinforced here? Knight C4. And now rook f7, which gives f8 for the bishop, a4. The bishop goes back here rather than, say, on this diagonal. King h1, knight c5. The knight's preparing to reroute. a5, knight e6. It seems, you know, very human-like play at the moment. Now, this sacrifice looks a little bit dodgy, you might think. But, um, yeah, it, it is one of the moves which can promise to give white something because there's a lot of pressure on the black position. And in fact, in this position now, uh, so it's two pawns for the knights. You know, white's got this kind of rolling pawn center potentially. And here after knight e5, a repetition is avoided actually with rook e7. We see a6, another point that this whole structure is being attacked. c5, f4. So there's definitely some compensation for that piece sack. Queen e8. A takes, bishop takes, and now queen a5. You can see pawns double attacked. Well, there's a lot of pressure on black's position. This is protected at the moment, but there's a lot of pressure on the black position. Knight d4, queen drops back. And now, yeah, with this pressure here, we see, okay, rook e6 protects that pawn. Bishop e3 is played. If this comes back. Bishop e3, rook b6. Okay, we have knight c4. Now rook b4, b3, a5. So offering a pawn here, actually. Another pawn, so there's quite a few pawns. Knight takes, uh, bishop a6. Now bishop takes, rook takes. So let's examine the material situation. So it's the bishop pair versus knight and four pawns, I believe. Three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, quite a lot. Uh, 
sorry, knight and three pawns at the moment. But these are just double pawns as well. These are not great pawns here. So we see knight c4, rook d8, g3, h6. And there's a hint with h6 that something like g5 might happen later. Queen a5. Now it becomes four pawns after this. Yeah, because it's double attack on a6 and c5. And black doesn't want to relinquish the bishop pair. So an interesting decision uh, here. After bishop c8. It's, an, it's another pawn biting the dust. So what can the bishop pair do here? Well, some escape squares for the king are taken with this as well. So eyeing those light squares. Now rook d7. Queen e5. And then, in fact, with this, the queen's just come off because black's got that a file now. But uh, can black create some sort of attack here? Knight c4. g5. So the, the bishop can use this diagonal now. Rook c1. Bishop g7. Knight e5. Rook a8. Waiting around there for a moment. Knight f3. Bishop b2. And the bishop drops here. So, yeah, not committing the rook. And the rook can use f8 square in some cases. Knight g1. Bishop drops back to d7. Knight e2. Bishop d2. Yeah, bishop e3. Keeping the pressure on white's pawn chain. And now bishop g4. So the bishops are working well together there. Now bishop d2. And you can see that this with this infiltration, black's starting to put so much pressure. Black's going to win some material soon. After h3, yeah. Rook. Uh, bishop takes e2, rook f2. Black gives back a piece here. Now if g takes them, rook takes c2, followed by bishop d3, all the pawns are going to go. So we have um, this one, rook takes e2, but this leaves quite a dominating dark square bishop, all these pawns on light squares. This looks a bit silly, uh, comical in fact. You know, this, this extra bishop is actually quite potent here and the rook's quite aggressive. King g7, g4, another pawn on light square. This dark square bishop, all these pawns on light squares. So the bishop has a free reign on the dark squares. And the king comes up, travelling across dark squares. That looks like a desperate pawn sacrifice after e5. That's taken. Rook a1, rook f2. And yeah, black's making inroads here. Check. And these pawns are going to be dropping off. They're starting to drop off. Leaving black simply a bishop up. Yeah, simply a bishop up here. And so it's just a matter of consolidating, really, the position. And here, uh, the operators, uh, or maybe the computer just resigns itself. I think probably the operators resigned on White's uh, behalf. So this game is just an example of something gigantic, basically, called reinforcement learning. Uh, I had assumed wrongly that the kind of techniques used to beat the Go world champion wouldn't be used in chess. I was wrong. And apparently self-learning has got quite a lot of potential it seems. Uh, that stockfish was crushed is just remarkable uh, using a combination of genetic algorithm and a more generic um, sort of searching uh, algorithm. It's, it's phenomenal stuff. It's it's another landmark. It's another checkpoint in uh, AI history generally, not just chess AI. But a AI has used chess as a vehicle for many years for exploration because it's a perfect information game. So it's remarkable. I want to show other games from this match and see what we can learn about opening choices, middle game ideas, etc. From this one, it seems it echoes some advice uh, told that pieces are often worth more than pawns and you can see that that the pieces have more potential it's interesting that black would rather give up a pawn than lose the bishop pair at one point only when later it cashed out one of its bishops entirely uh, to do a lot of damage and start that uh, to get all the pawns back so i hope you got something from this and it's a fascinating landmark example game uh, from the recent paper which i'll put in the description of the video you might, might want to check out Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.